The Fuji X106 is the hottest new camera out there. I myself was lucky enough to have my pre-order early enough, so I've got mine right here. But they're still backordered into oblivion, so depending on when you're watching this, you're either second-guessing whether you want to keep waiting for your order, or you're considering adding it to your cart. Well, before you make either decision, I've got a few warnings from things that I've experienced since I got mine that I think you should be aware of. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna to try to keep this video as short as possible. In an effort to do so, I don't wanna go into an endless diatribe about why the X106 is so great, but I do worry that the rest of this video is gonna come off particularly harsh. So in an attempt to ward off all of the Fuji bro hordes that I know are gonna come at me in the comments, let me just quickly say that this is a truly great camera. It bridges the gap nicely between a high-end mirrorless camera that I use for work and the iPhone that I use for texting and taking pictures of my dog. It is an extremely capable camera as an everyday carry and it has a ton of nice little features that'll get you excited to take photos. It's not gonna magically make you a better photographer like some people on the internet are trying to convince you, but it will definitely inspire you to take more photos, which should start to sharpen your eye quite a bit. If you want a more in-depth, positive review, let me know in the comments and we'll make it happen. Okay, so let's start going through some of the things I wish I knew before buying this camera. In truth, I did know about many of them because I was an owner of the X105, but I bet many of you did not. The first is that some assembly is required with this camera. Not everything you're gonna want is included when you open your shiny new box. Perhaps the most egregious is that there's no battery charger included with the X106, which is an issue because the battery life isn't particularly great. It has the same battery as the X105, which also didn't come with a charger. Now, while the X106's new processor is allegedly more efficient and the battery is supposed to be rated for 450 shots compared to 420 of its predecessor, I still haven't been able to go for a heavy day of shooting on just one battery. The other morning I was walking around for a little over an hour and I only took 92 photos and I was already in the red. You are able to charge via USB-C however, which is great, but you're probably gonna wanna add at least one or two spare batteries. At which point you'll want to pick up a charger rather than having to charge it within the camera every time. The X106 also requires further assembly with respect to the lens. Out of the box, you get this cute little fixed 23 millimeter F2 lens and the lens cap. But I bet when you're watching all these cool videos online about the camera, you're seeing people with all these cool lens hoods and such. Well, just a heads up that none of those are actually included with the camera. On the one hand, I think it's cool because you can kind of customize it to your own liking, but it's another small cost that's gonna to add to your total. Two additional issues with the lens out of the box is that you can't attach filters and it isn't weather sealed. In order to do so, you guessed it, more attachments sold separately. You first need to get this adapter ring, which allows you to attach the filter, which then provides the weather resistance. Rather than a UV filter, I've opted for the Polar Pro Short Stash Everyday Filter, which combines both a circular polarizer and about an eighth of mist diffusion. It's an epic combo that pretty much has never left the camera. But once you have that adapter ring attached, now the stock lens cap doesn't stay on. One great thing about the X100 series is its small size, but it's also one of the downsides. Namely, that there just isn't much grip to hold on to. Again, there's accessories for that as well, whether it's a thumb grip or one of the aftermarket handles. Personally, I actually kind of like that they've kept the small frame, so then you can decide how to fit it to your own hand and needs afterwards. All in all, if you want to get the lens adapter, the lens hood, one spare battery, a charger, and like a thumb rest, I think you're looking at around $200 in add-ons. On the topic of like grips and base plates, you can't really put an Arca Swiss plate on the X106 because it'll block the battery door. If you're opting to skip the battery charger and just charge internally, you might be thinking, well, fine, no problem. But the true issue is the SD card, which is in the same compartment as the battery, so you can't remove it with a tripod plate attached. The best remedy I've seen is something like the small rig L bracket, which includes a grip and the Arca Swiss plate on the bottom, but it has holes for the battery door. All right, so let's move on to the things that are supposed to be improved with the X106. One of the biggest changes is the autofocus upgrades. 
In general, the autofocus is much improved. The new subject detection is great, the tracking is improved, and all around it's just much snappier. I actually found that it performed best using that subject detection type features, but when you're trying to use just a simple point focus, it does do a lot of hunting, especially when you're focusing on something in the shadows or something you're going from somewhere far away to focusing on something up close. With any of the autofocus modes, wow, this lens is still loud. Like, listen to this. To me, nothing outside of a kit lens should sound like this, especially when it's touting all its video specs, but we'll get to that in a second. Another thing I know a lot of people have their panties in a bunch about about the X106 is the film emulations and the custom film recipes. Now, these are an awesome way to stylize your images and get a great look without much effort, but I do have a few warnings for you. First, many of the popular custom film recipes slow down the speed of the camera immensely. Like you've got to wait like two to four seconds between each photo. This is typically caused by a film recipe that makes adjustments to the clarity setting, which honestly most of the popular ones do. I was hoping that this would be improved with the new processor, but no. It is super easy, however, to avoid using that clarity setting, but if you do run into those issues once you have yours and you don't know what's going on, now you know. And for those who are newer to the Fuji system, you can't add these recipes into settings in Lightroom. It'll just be baked into the JPEG. Obviously, it's part of the appeal that you don't need to edit your images with these recipes, but just know that RAWs will import as a normal RAW. Two other fun facts to know about this, however. First, you can actually import the stock film emulations into Lightroom for your RAW images as a Lightroom profile. If you just go to the profile browser and then select camera matching, you can now select from all of the film emulations that are baked into the camera and make any additional edits, regardless of which profile you actually shot on when you were taking the photo. Second, the X106 now supports HEAF in addition to JPEG, which has the added benefit of reduced file size and a larger color depth compared to JPEG. Images shot in HEAF with a custom film recipe will still have that recipe baked in, but if you did wanna make some minor tweaks and changes in post, you now have a little bit more latitude compared to a JPEG. But there is a downside. HEAF isn't particularly well supported like anywhere. So while it's supported by Lightroom and Apple, good luck trying to post it straight to social media. All right, next up, I wanna talk about video because aside from the autofocus and the increased megapixel count, this is one area where it's made probably the biggest jump from the X100V. On the surface, the specs seem great. It records 4K 10-bit video or 4K up to 60 frames per second. It's got an internal ND and IBIS, something that like even the highest cinema cameras don't have both of. Much of the marketing and many of the videos on the internet hype up the video features quite a bit. They even sell it with a video monitor kit. But let's pump the brakes. First things first, the rolling shutter is downright dreadful. Like imagine you stuck the camera inside of a jello mold. That's kind of the feeling that you get. It does get a bit better when you're at 60 frames per second, both in the normal and HQ modes, but anything in 24 or 30 frames per second is likely to make you seasick. We also need to talk about the ports. Fuji opted for a micro HDMI port, which honestly makes sense. I get that an ultra portable camera is gonna go with a micro HDMI as well. What I can't get over, however, is that they've opted for a 2.5 millimeter audio input. Yes, 2.5, not the 3.5 that comes on like every microphone that you could possibly want to plug into this thing. Audio is half the battle when it comes to video, but apparently Fuji just wants us to carry around a little dongle adapter to connect our microphone or suffer from the lens autofocus noise by using the in-camera microphone. But that's not the worst part. Both the audio and the HDMI port are placed on the right side of the camera where your hand is supposed to go. So let's say you wanted to get some higher quality audio or have a video monitor, where the heck are you actually supposed to hold the camera? Look, I get it. If you wanna take a couple quick clips with this thing, you can, but a lot of people are trying to make this into something that it's not. It has some cool video specs, don't get me wrong, but don't go buy this expecting to go and actually operate it like a proper video camera. Now, I've spent a good chunk of time dunking on this camera, but I wanna reiterate that I actually really do like it a lot. Is it perfect? No. Is it an improvement upon its predecessor? 
absolutely. If you haven't bought one yet or you're still waiting for your delivery date, I think you'll be happy with it as long as you're aware of some of the drawbacks that I've covered here. Or heck, if you don't need that improved autofocus, I'm willing to bet you can find somebody who's looking to offload their used X100V for a pretty compelling price. I promise I have a few more videos about the X106 in the works that aren't so negative because there really are a lot of things to like. So if you wanna see those, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.